Okay, so this is the base model M1 Mac from two years ago, so November 2020, and uh, it doesn't ever fail to impress me. I've just installed Debian on it and put the KDE Plasma desktop environment on it with uh, one gig of RAM I'm using, and it just works incredibly well. So let's switch into screen capture and have a look. Now I'm capturing this with QuickTime on this Mac while I'm doing this video, so that's more resources, but it doesn't, it doesn't struggle with it at all. So if I do four fingers up on the trackpad, I can switch between the different systems. And this is UTM, which is a virtual machine. And uh, if I minimize it, you can see that I can move it around just like any other windowed program uh, and then maximize it. And if I start something like uh, Conkey, which I've installed on here using the uh, Discover store that comes with KDE Plasma, and you can see that it works out RAM usage 564 out of 974, um, but it is using something like ZRAM or ZSwap to be able to enable that. But what I can't get is how good the performance is, and I can only guess, obviously the M1 processor is incredibly powerful, but also the storage on this MacBook is very fast. So if it runs out of RAM, it just starts using uh, the very quick storage, so it doesn't seem to impact performance. So if I start opening some things up, so if we open up the Chrome browser and uh, we'll do a search for Hot UK Deals, just a normal web page, just to show that it's it's working fine as a computer. Uh, let's go to YouTube and play uh, HDR Lee PSP video. Did that in a strange order. Oh yeah, but it finds it anyway. And watch on YouTube. And you can hear the audio coming through as well, although it's uh, interrupted by that pop-up. So let's just skip this advert, get a full screen, and just check what resolution. So it's running at 1080 anyway. Uh, and if I do stats for nerds, then we'll see that it's not dropping any frames at 1080, not struggling at all with that. Uh, so let's quit out of that. And while it's playing that, let's just open another one, BBC Sport. And it, it just is incredibly fast and really, really nice to use. Now, I didn't mean to install this uh, only using one gig with UTM. It did it on its own. Uh, so if I quit out of this, so let's just do four fingers up. I don't know if it will let me access this. Uh, oh yeah, it does. So you can see uh, it's the ARM version of Debian and it's LDXE that it's installed. Uh, and I did that from the gallery on UTM. And you can see all the settings. It's, it's done this by default. Now, when I first started using UTM, you had to put in a few settings, but, but it was still very, very easy. Uh, it's, it's even easier now. So if you go to the gallery, you can just install any of the operating systems. It downloads and installs it and picks all these options for you. Now, I, if I was doing it, I'd probably have picked three gig of RAM because I'm pretty sure that's what I did when I last did Ubuntu and also Windows 11 using this method. But it's picked one gig of RAM and it's absolutely fine. So if we go back into it and let's just shut it down uh, just to show you that UTM gallery. And go back into that in a minute. Uh, all of this just just lightning fast. Really, really impressed with it. It does go slower shutting down when Conkey is enabled, uh, which I hadn't done before. But uh, you know, it's absolutely fine. There you go. So now it takes me back to this screen, and uh, if I go up to the top, I can then just minimise that. And you can see it says stopped. So let's just quit UTM and launch it again. So you can see here, create a new virtual machine or browse the UTM gallery. If I click on UTM gallery, uh, this is the version that I picked and you can see it says ARM. I think if you click on it, yeah, it does tell you what it's gonna do. So the architecture and various different things only wants to use a gig of RAM. So let's hit download on that and wait till that's downloaded. So that's finished downloading now. So let's hit open in UTM and allow. And you can see on the left hand side that it's starting to install. And while it's doing that, you can see that UTM is available from the App Store. You can do it with uh, GitHub, and it's available for free through GitHub. 
but if you have it through the app store then it updates on its own and i really like the fact that it updates on its own i think it's about 10 pound i can't tell because obviously i bought it and so it shows up on here but yeah if you don't want to pay any money at all then you can use the github version but it won't update itself and it's pretty decent because if you click on it um, they're updating it all the time like so various different things that they've added in a recent update only a month ago okay so that's just finishing up now and you can see that now i've got xfce and lxde so if i hit play on that let's see what happens as a first boot so i'm not touching anything on the keyboard you can see it lets me boot into it so hit enter and that's it so we can go full screen uh, i'm pretty sure the login is debian and debian it does tell you on the uh, on the main screen so login yeah and i'm up and running it just is truly amazing so i'd rather use a different desktop environment and that's why i installed uh, kde plasma on the other one so let's just log this out and shut down and show you how quick it is to switch between the various different systems so i can close that down you can see that one's on here i also have various different options here look I can clone it if I want to mess about with an operating system. Uh, I can I can basically have a clone and then just delete that. Uh, and I can delete this as quick as this. Uh, so that's gone now. Uh, you can also, in your downloads folder, I found out that you can delete this. I was wondering if it was using this file, um, but it doesn't rely on it. You can see that I've only got the, the more recent one that I've got here. The other one I've deleted, and yet this version works absolutely fine. You can see starts up in a very similar way, but because I've installed the KDE Plasma desktop, once I put my password in, which I've also changed, it will launch into that. Really, really nice. So let's install Handbrake and convert a video file and see how well that does. So I can use the Discover Store, and you can see Handbrake comes up, click on Install, and it installs really quite quickly. I've just installed uh, some Office software as well, just to show how well that runs. But also, yeah, so that's installed already. Uh, so also, let's just start randomly opening things up. I'm gonna run uh, Conkey again. So if I press the Command key and start typing Conkey, I can launch Conkey, uh, and that will show me how much memory it's using. So let's open a few other things. So let's open Handbrake which I can do from here, and launch. And let's drag that over and let's import a video file, so open source. I put it in my videos folder. I've got some GoPro 1080 footage that I usually use for demos. And let's convert this to, uh, let's see what we got. 720 very fast and let's hit start and just see how quick yeah see even that process is really good so if we look at the swap usage 652 out of 951 it's going up a bit more but it still doesn't seem to be impacted by the the fact that it's only running on one gig of ram which is super impressive you can see that i mean that is is really fast now obviously part of that is going to be to do with the storage but yeah, it's super impressive, right? So let's go into the folders and let's see. I think it probably puts it into videos with the other one. Yeah, so there's one here and one here. Whichever one is the smallest one is going to be the 721. So 25.913, yeah. So this is going to be the smallest one. If I hit the space bar, does it play it? Uh, oh, that launches it back into this. Uh, so let's double click it and see if it launches some ah so it's picking handbrake as the video player of choice now so if i right click on it and uh mpv media player comes up as an option and i can play that video i'm just amazed at how well everything's run let's leave that running and let's call up the office software uh so i can't even remember what it's called ah impress so let's call that up and you'll see how fast that will launch. You can see the RAM usage and the swap usage, or let's minimize this so we can still see Conkey. 
uh, although this is getting a bit more tricky because there's so many things on the screen. So let's drag that down to about here and let's import a image. So uh, how do we go back? So if we go Debian and then we want pictures because I've put it in the pictures folder and oh, that's just there's my logo. It, just incredible performance. Let's open up Chromium as well. Chromium is something that uses quite a lot of memory and uh, it's still using DuckDuckGo as the the search and that's because I tried to change it and it didn't let me change it. I don't know why that is um, but I didn't spend any time on it and uh, it's definitely stuttering a bit on that page so I'm moving up and down. Oh, okay so I have hit a bit of a limit here using the one gig because it's not as smooth as it was but I've got so many things open at the moment and uh, and it just is really impressive. Uh, maybe if I allocated it more RAM, it might cope better with that. But um, yeah, it's that's impressive. Oh, it does seem to have, yeah, it definitely got slow then. But if I start closing things down, I guess it will start sorting itself out. Uh, so let's get, I mean, we did have a lot of, you know, uh, content open at the same time. You can see it's dropping down very quickly now. Uh, now, if I call up some games, uh, I haven't installed anything too ambitious, but I have PR Boom on here, phase two. Let's launch that. Now, so that I don't have to use a trackpad on this, I'm going to plug in my mouse. So I've got a mouse dongle here. I'm going to plug it into this dock that I've been sent. Uh, I've got a separate video on that. And it comes up, USB device, would you like to connect 2.4 gig receiver to the virtual machine? So I'll say yes. So that will allow me to use the mouse with this. But it also works the same with the USB stick. So if I pop my USB stick in the side here, uh, in one of these USB 3 ports, again it comes up, confirm, and allow. And actually I could minimize this. It comes up, this not ejected properly in Mac OS, but that doesn't matter because I'm intending to use it within this software. So let's minimize that down, call up a folder, and uh, yeah, there's my 124 gig stick. And I actually transferred over some music and, and various different things uh, like the GoPro footage and everything from that stick using that method. So that works perfectly well. I'm actually really impressed with this uh, dock. I've been using it for the SD card. I've been using it to transfer things and also to connect it to my TV. And yeah, super impressive. I'll put a link in the description. So now I've got my mouse dongle plugged in. I can play some PR boom and I should be able to actually hit something. Although the mass sensitivity is proper at the moment. Very, very sensitive. But you can see that's working perfectly well. I know it's a really old game, but it's still fun to play. And again, this running on one gig of RAM in a virtual machine is amazing. And here's a bit of Super Touch Cart, which also seems to be working pretty well, all things considered. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.